got a dear sister here that uh, that I met in Colombia, uh, Amber. And I want to ask you, Amber, first of all, um, who were you before the you that you are now? Oh, hi. Well, first of all, hello, and thank you very much for um, for having me here with you. Very happy to be here and to share my my experience, my life experience, my human experience, and who am I before stepping into the person that I am today. So as much as I dislike using labels and terms and all of those very box categories, I think it's also essential uh, to describe and maybe paint a, a better picture. So, you know, straight up, I was an alcoholic. I was an addict. I was uh, someone who was very in victim mode. Uh, I was very hurt. I was very upset. I was caught in the matrix, if you want to say it that way. I was stuck in old ways. I had unhealthy behaviors. And I was just miserable, to be very honest. Wow. Well, thank you for, for sharing so openly and, and vulnerably. Um, you know, the, the whole whole idea of this is is, you know, for those that are still going through their stuff and, and still, you know, kind of met with that old way of, of thinking and, and being and, and just, you know, feeling like they're stuck, feeling like there's no hope, feeling like they, they can't change um, for us to be able to share our own stories during those times. And, um, you know, hopefully provide some empowerment and, and, you know, the idea that yes, no matter what you are going through, you really can change. So, um, so, so you mentioned some of those, some of those things that you were going through. How did you like, obviously when you're in it, it's so hard to identify, you mm -hmm. know, that you're in it and that man, like changes need to be made. How, how do you feel you're able to do that? And any kind of points that you have for others that are currently in their stuff um, mm -hmm. to identify and then take that step towards actually creating change in their lives. Right. So to be very honest, like my transformational journey has been so turbulent. It's been so challenging. It's been really difficult. And it wasn't voluntary. Like it didn't start voluntarily. Like that's something that, you know, I have to be very straight up, straight up about. Um, if we're just going back to the whole addictions side, it was my parents who sent me to rehab when I was 21 because I didn't think I had an issue. I knew that something was up, but I was in it, like you said, and I and I couldn't see. I had blinders on, and I, I just didn't understand where I was at. Um, but the more that things happened in my life, and the more that I, I guess it, it's sort of like you know being chipped at slowly, slowly, slowly. The more something started changing, and and I've always had this mindset of sort of like you know we only have one life. We might as well live it to the to the to the best, right? And and that was a mentality that I had that took me into very extremes of like partying and recklessness and all of that. But also when my mindset started shifting, I guess it's also like, oh, well, if we actually really do only have this one lifetime on, you know, planet Earth, then I, I really want to make the best of it and not just like fuck myself up completely with drugs and alcohol. So anyways, bringing it back to the question, how how did sort of all of that shift happen and, and transform? It was just, it was through a lot of hardship. It, I had to be forced. Like that. It, that's how it started. Other people needed to force me into things. But then it's like, it's like riding a bicycle. At first you have the, the two back wheels. And then one day your parents decide, oh, it's time to teach you how to take them off and how to to ride a bike by yourself and when they they come off it's you know it's scary and yes you fall and it, and you don't know what to do but then eventually you get the hang of it by yourself because you realize that there is no other choice there is no putting the the, the wheels back on again because they're gone and that's sort of how I felt in my mid-20s I'm like okay so many things are happening and just to share a little bit more you know I was in rehab for three months I got kicked out of rehab my dad died one week after I got kicked out you know like so many things were going on and as I start, sort of entered this spiritual awakening phase of like being like, okay, I really need to get my shit together. I'm going to start studying again. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to 
try and get this right because I'm so tired of being in this like you know in the cloud and of having this like darkness around me and not being able to see the lights I had no hope I was like what is my life I hate it I hate everything about it I hate my reality but once I understood that the only way out of it is through um, because there are no shortcuts in life I mean of course there are shortcuts of course there are shortcuts but sooner or later you're gonna have to do the hard work so it's like, mm. why take the shortcut when it's just going to bring you to the same space and you might as well go through the hard, lengthy, challenging, you know, route, because if you don't do that, you're going to have to do it anyways. Um, mm. yeah. So it was just mostly a question of, of of changing perspective and just understanding that, you know, there's no shortcuts. You just got to do the work and that's it. And that's OK. And we're all in our individual process. We are all at our own on stages there's no right or wrong where i'm at does not mean that bill or bob needs to be there you know where you're at you had your own journey and it doesn't mean that what you did is going to work for me and what i did is going to work for you that's also a key thing it's understanding that we all have our process and that that's perfectly fine mm. yeah beautifully said beautifully said so like obviously you mentioned um you know your struggles with with alcohol and, and addiction um were, were there any other kind of really big perceived obstacles? And, and the reason I say perceived is because I believe that everything is, is happening for us, you know? So, um, but, but were there any other really kind of big things, big kind of turning points in your life where you can identify and, and you're like, yeah, like this was, this was something that I was really up against and, you know, leveraging and leaning on, you know, these, these tools and these processes, I was able to overcome it. Hmm. I mean, what comes to my mind now, and, and, you know, you, you know, a little bit of, of my story and mm -hmm. just the big events sort of that happened that shaped the person that I am today is in my first 10 years of existence, you know, brother died, dad started, dad started cheating on my mom parents divorced and the same year they got divorced I survived the tsunami in 2004 with my dad so all that happened in 10 years right yeah. then the next 10 years from 10 to 20 years old uh moved countries I don't know how many times discovered drugs alcohol and sex when I was in Bangkok entered the darkness got raped you know discovered abuse like finished high school moved to Paris for university all of that that's in the next decade now I'm in the third decade. I'm in my 20s. I'm 28 now. And between 20 and 30, fuck, man, I got sober. My dad died. I relapsed. I got engaged. I almost got married. I was working as a mental health counselor. I bought a car. I got property. I went traveling. I went back into the darkness. I met this other guy. I was in the most toxic relationship I've ever been in. Then I got sober again. And now I have started the wellness in Colombia and I'm living like an absolutely magical life that I could ne ever, ever imagine. Um, so going back to your question, I realized, and exactly what you said, life happens for us. It doesn't happen to us. And it's just a question of shifting. It's just a mindset question. It's a question of perspective. Once we understand that we need to step out of that victim role, that whatever life throws to us is not to beat us down. It's not God or life or whatever that's trying to be like, yo, you're a piece of shit. Like we don't want you on planet earth. No, it's, I'm going to give you these challenges, these obstacles, because you can face it because you have the strength to face it. Like, think about it. Whatever's coming our way wouldn't be coming our way if we weren't capable of, of, of facing it. And that is just a fact once I understood that, I started seeing all these things as gifts. And I started seeing my whole past as a gift, as a treasure. Man, if I didn't have all that shit happen to me, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So all mm -hmm. of that darkness and trauma and hurt and abuse and all that, that is my most precious treasure and gift that I have. Because through that darkness, I transmuted that into the light and into this, this, this gold and into you know, this, this fire and this power that I have in me, because I don't ever want to go back there. 
you know, but that mm. fueled my change and my growth. And I know for a fact that we all have that within us because we're all human beings, right? We're not all different species. We're humans with the same brain, the same bodies, two arms, one face, two eyes, everything. So if, if you know, there are people that can really transform like that with the same brain, with the same genetic makeup, there's no reason why others couldn't as well. Like we all mm. have it in us. Wow, so beautifully said. I want to I want to go into the feeling feelings a little bit. Do you do you remember what and how you felt before uh, compared to how you feel now? Yeah, of course I remember. How could how could I not remember feeling like death? Feeling like I wanted to die so much like yearning for that death fantasizing for death you know like I was in such a dark place and honestly I never want to forget that feeling because I don't want to forget where how far I've come from you know now where I'm at I'm so fucking full of light and full of love and I love 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 my life and I love myself and hearing myself speak I'm like I don't recognize myself trust me I don't mm. recognize any of it but yes I do feel I do remember feeling like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. It was like I was in such a, it just felt like there was no way out. There was no hope. And I thought that I was the biggest piece of shit on, on, on planet earth. And that like, no one understood me. That was the biggest thing. I'm like, no one gets me, even though people had been through addictions and had lost a dad and all of this, da, da, da. I was like, no, but they don't understand what I'm going through because they haven't been in my life. They haven't been in my head. So how yeah. could they understand? So it was those feelings of like complete isolation. No one gets me. No one cares about me. You know, I'm I'm just worthless and I deserve to die. And it was just that like that that cycle of like, yeah, I I don't even know what I'm doing here and there's no way out. That's how I felt. There's mm -hmm. just no way out. Wow. What a contrast. What a contrast. What what would you say to someone who is not really living but just kind of slowly dying and and what i mean by that is you know i, I feel like when we talk about peak performance i feel like we're, we're all peak performers in certain areas and kind of the old program is that we got to work really hard to make money mm -hmm. and so i think a lot of people are probably peak performers in that area but every other area of their life is suffering you know their health is suffering their relationships are are not you know super deep and connected um maybe they're they're attending a job that they're, they're not really passionate about and and you know they're not fulfilled so it's it's kind of like i feel like so many people end up kind of just going through the motions in their life and not really living so what what advice would you give to someone that may be in that in that type of situation? Mm -hmm. So it's that concept of like of existing and not living. And I, I can relate so much to that because I was in it. I felt like I was just my existence on planet Earth was just, you know, just. Um, in in French, we say metro boulot dodo. You know, it's like metro work sleep, like eat what work, sleep, repeat. It was just like that very monotone mm -hmm. living for the weekends, maybe, because that would be my only time of freedom to actually feel and live and not be stuck in this, in, in the nine to five and, and all of that. And you know what? I have many friends still that are in that and we talk openly about it. And I tell them, you can get out of that if you want to and they say no I can't because of money because of family because of kids because of this and that and trust me like I get it and all this is not some like voodoo hippie spiritual shit no this is real life and I understand that and I've been in it and <laughs> as cliche as this might sound and it's a cliche for a reason it goes back to mindset and it goes back to perspective everything comes from the mind you know mm -hmm. ev everything 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 comes from the mind you have that little tweak in your thought, everything else changes. I mean, think about it. If you're having a bad day, 
and you know you're in that thought process of like fuck like today's a horrible day and this is not working out and this is not you know you, you're trapped in that like negativity but when you're having a good day and you decide you know like oh I'm having a I'm so grateful for this like I'm enjoying this so much things seem to just spiral in that in that direction snowball in that direction mm -hmm. and from what I've understood it's the same on a bigger scale it's just, it's the same for life like if I'm in this headspace of like oh I hate my life and my job is so difficult and you know I can't get out of it because of my of my parents and of my kids and all that of course I'm going to stay in it but if I tell myself you know what I'm going to make the decision to change things up and it doesn't have to be massive overnight change it can be small things you know set little goals be like okay next month I'm maybe going to go from full-time to part-time and start working on my passion on what I really want to do or maybe it's like my relationship with my partner this is not working out. I'm going to, I'm going to enforce better communication. I'm going to enforce one date night per week. And once again, all of these little things, there's no one size fits all, right? Like you got to figure out what works for you in your context, in your environment, with your family and your, your job. Like I have friends in, in Greece, for example, uh, when I was living in Athens and they were, you know, purely in the nine to five working in an office living with their salary and just being like I mean at the time I wasn't Amber I was Chris they were like Chris like you know I'll never be able to like get out of this and like travel like you're doing and everything and I literally I I literally showed them the example I said I'm gonna quit everything and go to South America and change my life and that's what I did that's what I did because you realize at some point that like and this is gonna sound cliche again but anything is possible anything is possible and you know life is so well made that it's not possible that we just go out there trying to change our lives and die you know I mean I, I know that I'm talking from a point of, of of faith and spirituality where I feel divinely protected but even for people that are not on that path and that don't connect to a higher power or whatever it's just not possible that you come here on earth, that you live a life just to die. Like, do you really think that your life is so, so bland and neutral and meaningless that like you ended up coming here and doing all the things you've done and meeting all the people you've met and, you know, having all these experiences for nothing? No, like there's clearly a bigger purpose. There has to be, there has to be. And with that basis, with that thought process, you know, get out there and do what you really want to do because I'm sure you know life can end in a second. When my dad died, he died unexpectedly. I was WhatsApping him at night. A few hours later, I get a phone call, he's dead. Like, that's how life happens. You know, like people die unexpectedly. Like, we can't take any of this for granted because we might, I might just walk out and die, you know? And I wouldn't want to live my last moments feeling miserable or feeling like I'm not living a life that I want to be living because why, why would anyone want that? I don't know if I went on a bit of a tangent there, but a little bit, but it was really good. It was really good. Thank you for, for sharing that. It's um, you know, it's amazing how when we open up to the idea of change and open up to, you know, even just looking in a in a different direction, how all of a sudden the steps of how we can change and how we can get out from, you know, behind that rock or in that stuck situation that we feel like we're in. Um, those steps begin to show up, you know, and it's, it, it is really, really beautiful. And, but the, the, the first step can't show up until you open up to it, you know, and then you find the first step and then the second step shows up. And so, so for those that are looking that feel like you can't change because of this, that, or the other thing, um, first open up to the idea and then the steps will begin to show up. Exactly. And I think also maybe for the people that are more, you know, need concrete action steps, because I'm also like that, right? Like, it's, it's great to talk about, oh, yeah, things will unfold and like talk about all this like very abstract concepts. But for the people that need step by step, one, master your body, because when you start mastering your body, you start mastering your mind. And when I say master your body, it's like exercise every day, take cold showers, start eating well, do all the things that are uncomfortable because through discomfort is growth. And once you master your vessel, this, this aligns automatically and everything becomes so much more easier. So if you're the type of person that's more like rational, like tell me exactly what to do, start exercising every day, start eating better, start going to bed earlier, 
meditate, you know, do all of these like physical things and you will see that your mind will automatically change.